Megan has written the most beautiful foreword in this book and he will now read from the book for you before we hear from Shane. Thank you very much. That was a very memorable speech, Tracy. Um, when I spoke to Shane about speaking tonight last week, he said, um, just don't speak like I'm dead. <laughs> I can't believe he said that to me, <laughs> because we both know it's what I do best. <laughs> when I wrote the foreword to the book, I wrote it very quickly. I just sat down and told a series of Shane Howard stories that are meaningful to me. And I'm just going to read one of those stories, and I was trying to make the point that um, how many artists connect as deeply in the number of places that Shane does. He bridges Ireland and Australia. And as an Irish Australian, that's very important to me. Indigenous, he bridges in Indigenous Australia and non-Indigenous Australia. And as a non-Indigenous Australian, that's very important to me. Here's another Shane Howard story, which I will tell in two parts. The year is 2009. I'm being shown around South Brisbane at 2 o'clock in the morning. My guide is a Murray called Darren Godwell, who is also the president of the local residence action group. Does this man love the place he lives in or what? He shows me around it with so much pride, telling me the stories of the places we walk, like the one about the riots directed against immigrants in 1919, the path the gang walked to attack them. He points out each of the churches, the old weatherboard shops and pubs built in that big handsome Queensland manor. But the piece de resistance, the centrepiece of what he wants to show me, is Musgrave Park, and he tells me the Murray stories of the place, or some of them, about how it was always a meeting place and the men's dancing ground that is still there, though slightly hidden by grass. It's two o'clock in the morning and it's not cold, but it has just been raining and the wet air smacks you like a friend, sharpening you up, making you feel alive. And I don't want to interrupt him, but a song is filling me. A song of Shane's, one of my favourites, possibly the favourite, Murray time. How to describe that song? I can't, but it is an unusual moment of grace in Australian art. A love song so grand it could be called an anthem, written by a white man to a black couple that somehow captures the dazzling immensity of this park, its lush wetness, its enormous fig trees, the way the green is bright beneath the park lights, the fertile smell, and my guide is telling me this is still a meeting place. It was where the blackfellas set up camp during the Brisbane Commonwealth Games in 1982 to tell the world they were being denied justice in their own land. Shane was there too. He has always used song as a form of protest, but Murray Time is not a protest song as such. It's about surrendering to the spirit of a place. And at one point he runs three pictures together in six words. Musgrave Park, Brisbane Rain, Murray Land. Now here is the second part of the Maritime story. Where is my favourite version of Maritime to be found? On Shane Howard's album, Live in Ireland. It contains two live performances of the song, one in Waterford, one in Cork. That's right, the song appears twice on the album. He couldn't decide which version was better. <laughs> Neither can I, but I can tell you the difference. Irishman, Pat Crowley's accordion. It's not correct to say that Crowley follows the song. He wanders off on his own in this looping melody which brings a similarly beautiful ache to play. A similar knowledge about a world that's vanishing from the consciousness of most but not all. Now we're standing at the crossroads, brighter days some people say, but I hear voices, distant voices, saying take me back, take me back, Maritime. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane out.